It is now two minutes after eight right here on Morning Express on KTN News. And it's time for us to have another, well, uh, discussion right here on air. He is not as among the most controversial men in town, but he labels himself as Mr. Integrity in the Nairobi City gubernatorial contest. Miguna Miguna, a former advisor of the Prime Minister with a long law career in Canada, is competing against five other candidates, including incumbent Ivan Skidero, who we had here yesterday, Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko, and former Gatanga Member of Parliament Peter Kenneth. Is he a favorite of them all? Well, he's in studio this morning, and by the end of the interview, we shall get some answers to these questions. Miguna, Miguna, thank you for joining us this morning, and uh, welcome. Thank you. Let's start, first of all, by finding out. I know you've, you've uh, basically put out your manifesto out there, and you are seeking the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. What qualifies you to be the governor of Nairobi? Uh, First of all, um, I would like to say that I am the most qualified out of the lot uh, that have uh, uh, put forward their names. Um, I am the only one out of these characters who has a solid and impeachable integrity. Integrity is the software of leadership. I always say without which a human being is nothing but a wild beast. Integrity is what holds a leader together. Secondly, I have a vision. And a leader without a vision is like a ship in the ocean without a compass. They would not know whether to sail to the north, the south, east or west. Then, of course, I am the only one that published a comprehensive manifesto that contains concrete policies and plans for transforming Nairobi. And I did that a year ago, which means I have provided Nairobi residents with an opportunity to interrogate not just the manifesto but myself. Uh, I put this online and published it and have disseminated it all over. Uh, there are characters that have come up with manifestos 14 days, 13 days to election. Uh, those are not just jokes. They are intended to uh, deceive the people that they have a plan. Because before you are nominated for any public office, the basis of the nomination should be your manifesto, uh -huh. should be your character and integrity, should be your vision and, of course, record. And uh, uh, if you allow me, my record is crystal clear. I worked as the senior most advisor of the former prime minister, the Honorable Rail Odinga, and nobody has come forward, and I have publicly challenged anyone to come forward and say anything that I did which was illegal, unconstitutional, or immoral. There is none. None at all. No, not even a whiff okay. of an allegation. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I have a solid uh, background and record as a barrister and solicitor and a mediator uh, in the province of Ontario in Canada. And without any complaint to the Law Society of Upper Canada uh, against me, and I've been an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, again, for more than, for, since 1998, no, 2008, without any complaints. So this is what you need as a leader to put forward your name. And of course, I care very much about this country. I have fought for the second liberation since 1987 when I was a student leader at the University of Nairobi. Okay. Yes. I want to go back to point number one. You've talked yes. about integrity being the reason why Nairobians or Kenyans should give you an opportunity to become the governor of Nairobi. But if I asked all the other leaders, they'd probably mm. give me the same, uh, you know, low down that they have integrity. And one might be lost in many words. What mm. exactly you mean when you say you have integrity? Is it simply because uh, there is no court case against you? Because they may also say we are scot-free right now because there is no, no court no. case against us. No, no. No, no. And I think as the media, you are doing your viewers a disservice 
by purporting not to understand what the word it's integrity is. It's not purporting means. not to understand, but Mr. Can I Nibu answer Nibu your Nibu question? Yes, no, please. you asked a question, and I'm allowed to answer it the way I would like to. And one of them is to challenge you on the presumption that anyone can just say they have integrity and that... It's not a presumption. It's just that I want to understand when you say you have integrity, you what separates you from the rest? May you stop arguing with me and may you, listen to my re may you listen to my response. I respond the way I want, and right now I'm responding. And I'm responding including challenging the implicit underlying uh, uh, basis of your question. So, yes, I am the only one with integrity, and I'll explain why. Mike Sonko has a criminal record. This is something he has not just admitted to. This is a public record. If you go to the Mombasa High Court, you will find that Mike Sonko was convicted of fraud and land grabbing and, and also drug dealing and went to prison. So he is a convicted, uh, is a convicted person. Now, Mike Sonko has publicly said that he's a big thief. On the 7th of May, you may have watched it, Hussein Mohammed interviewed Mike Sonko on Citizen TV. So this is not just an allegation. And he has said the other two, he meant Kidero Evans and Peter Kenneth, are bigger thieves than him. So that's number one. So he does not have integrity. You can't have integrity when you have a criminal record. The second point is this, Kidero Evans, or Evans Udiambu Kidero, is a man that has been involved in all manner of unethical practices in terms of management of public affairs. When he was working for the Mumia Sugar Company, he bankrupted the company. He was audited by, uh, by PM, uh, KPMG, and he went to court and made sure that the public did not get that record. Mm -hmm. He's been, uh, his, his, his record has been raised severally in Parliament by Pick and Pack. He has been investigated by the Auditor General, and I have reports consistently since 2013 of allegations which he has not refuted of mismanaging hundreds of billions of public resources. He was investigated by the EACC, and his name was put forward mm -hmm. together with Mike Sonkos as people who should not run for public office. 15 of his accounts and his family's accounts were frozen, and the DPP and the ESCC actually went to court, and he went and got an injunction. Okay, no, no, me, let me go ahead. Allow, because me to pose you, allow, allow me to pose you, because let, the reason I'm me, posing you is because I have asked you a direct question about And I'm answering it. Hang I'm on, answering hang it. On, hang on. Yes. Yeah, I've asked you a question directly in regards to your integrity. You, you seem to prove your integrity based on others. Why not just tell me about Miguna my, Miguna? Why do you have, uh, have to talk about Sonko? My, my friend, you said that there is no difference between me and I the others. I did not say that. I just said, tell me why you think you have more integrity than others. I did not say there is no difference. I'm going to answer the question the way I'm going to answer it. So I'm going to talk about my opponents, then I will talk about myself. But they're not here to defend themselves. No, no, no. Is it fair that we talk about you? Yes, he was here yesterday. was here yesterday. He did not talk about me. He doesn't have to talk about me. He's the serving governor and I'm entitled to talk about him, and I'm going to talk about but him. But you want to know about Miguna Miguna, not about Kidero. I started off by talking about myself, Mr. Wenda, and I am Gitonga. going Gitonga, and I'm going to talk about my opponents because I have to audit them. And I'm going to tell you that Kidero Evans has a litany of cases against him. Peter Kenneth bankrupted Kenya Re. Now, having said that, they cannot talk about me in relation to integrity because they know I have integrity. If, say, for example, like in this case, nobody has come forward to challenge Miguna on his integrity. Therefore, it is presumed because I can't talk about a negative. I have integrity. There has been no allegation of misappropriation of public funds, yet I've held public office. I've also been in private practice of law for 23 years. A lot of lawyers in Kenya misappropriate clients' funds. A lot of lawyers in Kenya have been disbarred or are facing investigations for mishandling clients' funds. None has happened in relation to Miguna. So you must judge somebody's record. When I say 
that have fought for the second liberation. It is public record that I was detained in 1987 November. I was released having fought for multi-party democracy. I went into exile. I led the Committee of Democracy in Kenya. And uh, one of the members was Willie Mutonga. I led that successfully, no allegations of misappropriation. Then I came back to the country and have lived my life without any blemish. Now, I'm supposed to talk about that. If I'm running against candidates, like now I'm running against these individuals, I must be able to distinguish myself from them. I must be able to say I have integrity and they don't have. And I must be able to explain and authenticate and be able to prove that they don't have integrity. And that's why I was giving you the example. The example. So you can't tell me that as a candidate, I can't speak about my opponents. Well, it's just to being fair that if they're not here to defend themselves, let's talk about Miguna Miguna, I, because I think, at the end of the no, day, no, no, I all I want to do is to know about Miguna Miguna and what qualities he has. Mr. But Getonga, let's, let's Mr. Getonga I think that is the flimsiness and the flippancy of the Kenyan media. The Kenyan media must interrogate, must vet candidates, whether they are there on the set or not. And I'm talking it is to not, no, it, it is not my fault. It is not my fault and cannot be held against me that you interviewed Kidero Evans here and he had nothing to say about me. Mm -hmm. That, in fact, should count for something, that he has nothing to say about me, which means that I have integrity, like I have said, and he doesn't. But you see, at the end of the day, Miguna Miguna, mm. Kenyans are watching, the Robians are watching, and they want yes. to know what is it that you have to bring on the table. But let's leave the integrity question. I for answer the questions the way you post them. You have answered that, yes. and that's OK. What yeah. leadership qualities do you have, given that in any platform that mm. Miguna Miguna has come mm. seems to be very abrasive, seems to mm. be very combatant, mm. seems to be one that is antagonistic? What leadership qualities do you bring on the table as governor of Nairobi? Because mm. you must work with people. You see, Mr. Getonga, Again, your question is problematic. Instead of asking a question, you editorialize it with so many negativity, and you don't have to do that. In fact, that's not the way you asked Kidero uh, questions yesterday. No, I'm going to answer it the way I have to answer it. So first of all, interrogate your questions. Uh, now let me answer you. Theft of public resources is an egregious offense against the people. And if you cannot be antagonistic against that, then there is a problem with your ethics. So yes, I am going to be very antagonistic against people stealing public resources. People perpetuating the culture of impunity, that you just get into public office, you enrich yourself, you become a billionaire, out of public resources, and then we just stand there and clap at you. That I'm not going to do. And I'm going to be very antagonistic against these people. But Miguna has practiced law, as I've said, for 23 years without a blemish. How would I have done that if I don't work with people? I work with my clients. I work with the courts. I work with the law society very harmoniously. No complaints. You've never read of a complaint from the Law Society of Kenya. You've never read of a complaint from the Law Society of Upper Canada. You've not heard that a judge threw me out of court because of disorderly conduct. Therefore, you have no reason to say that I don't work with people. Secondly, I worked for the prime minister and as his senior most advisor. And I was also the joint secretary of the permanent committee for the management of Grand Coalition Affairs for more than, for about three years. There was nothing antagonistic with the way I worked in the prime minister's office. Forget about the myths and the rumors that are not founded. The fact is, I worked there successfully. I was reinstated after the, uh, after the suspension, which means that whatever allegations were flying were unfounded. So therefore, you have no reason to say that I do not work uh, harmoniously with anyone. Uh -huh. If you pose a question, th the difference between me and the people you're used to, number one, they are mediocre and I am not. And I, I am proudly saying they are mediocre. Now, the second thing is that I am courageous and they are not. Mm -hmm. And then I have integrity and speak about it, and they don't have integrity and cannot speak about integrity. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the difference. If you consider that, if you consider standing up for the rights of Kenyans, 
if you consider challenging people perpetuating the culture of impunity as arrogant, so be it. Nobody said arrogant, but no, no, there no, you but go. No, no, but I'm saying you're <laughs> implying it, and I'm saying I'm very proud to challenge people perpetuating the culture of impunity in Kenya. That's the right thing to do. Okay. Let's talk about your vision. You've mentioned three things, why Nairobians should give you the opportunity to be governor of Nairobi. Number one, you've said integrity. Number two, vision. What's your vision for Nairobi? I've said more than that. I talked about my, my policies. Can, I talked about my programs. So, but of course, you're reducing them to two. But I'm no, trying to well, tell miguna, miguna, you, it's the thing more is, you, you, you want to do your job and do mine as well. But can we stick to, I've asked no, about no, your I'm vision. I'm answering your question. And the thing I don't do that probably others do is that the host does not dictate how I answer. You ask your question, but you must allow me the latitude to answer the way And I've I asked you about fit. your vision. Can you answer about the vision? The vision is a transformative Nairobi, a Nairobi that is going to be based on merit. You see, Kenya is not a merit-based society. Kenya, you find people, for example, and I'm going to give this example, it doesn't mean it is you. People would be sitting in your seat. They have not be, been hired and they're not working on the basis of qualification. They're working on the basis of whom they know. I want to build a society that is purely based on merit. So whether you are a Kikuyu, whether you are a Luo, whether you are a Kamba, whether you are a lawyer, whatever, as long as you have the basic ingredients, the qualifications that are advertised, you are entitled to be given a, a fair opportunity to hold a job. That's number one. Number two, I am going to build a society in Nairobi that is going to be based on zero. It's not just zero tolerance to corruption, uh -huh. but complete elimination of corruption in the public sphere, meaning that there is nobody who is going to work at City Hall that is going to be corrupt, because I'll audit them, and I'll make sure they are, they are, they are audited thoroughly. Their assets that they have stolen are, are seized back and used for public uh, for services delivery of services. I'm going to make sure that job creation is at the center, the engine of, uh, of, of development and growth. Right now, the job, uh, the unemployment is too high. The youth are so unemployed that you can't even speak of unemployment. And all my opponents say is that these youth should go and wash cars uh, so they will build for them sheds. For, for people to wash cars, or they are speaking of them as being a border border riders. I want a society where the youth will feel a part of Nairobi mm -hmm. as much as you and me, so that if the youth work hard, they are entitled to have access to capital, they are entitled to have access to high quality jobs, they will have access to good housing, and they can be like you and me. That is the society I want to create. I want to create an equal society, an equitable society. That is my vision. Yes. Okay. We also have, and you are on record, mm -hmm. as uh, implying or saying that Nairobi currently is run by cartels. It is run by cartels. It is run Anybody by cartels. Anybody who doesn't admit that is living in... In, in, in utopia. In, yeah. All right. How will you deal with the cartels? As Miguna Miguna, uh, how are you going to deal with those cartels? Because... You see... You should have. Uh, I have uh, it. I have the, I have the yeah, manifesto. So if you have read the manifesto, mm. I start off by explaining how I will deal with the cartels. Number one, I said, once I assume office, because mm. I have integrity, so there will be no corruption at that level of the executive, then I will appoint only cabinet secretaries because they are basically county secretaries, they are cabinet, mm -hmm. and the PSS for the county that have absolutely no blemish. People with integrity like myself. All the employees will be vetted and audited so that we are sure, forensic audit, so we are sure that these people have integrity. Then I will have a complete audit of all properties, all assets, all contracts, all tenders, to be able to ensure that there is absolutely nothing corrupt happening in my administration. This will be ongoing. Then I will have monthly public participation meetings, town hall meetings, with members of the public, 
to be able to report publicly allegations of corruption and action will be taken. I have said how the Kanjos will be retrained for those who qualify to be retrained. And for those who are contaminated beyond redemption, those will be either be fired or legal action will be taken against them. Uh -huh. Once you have that, my friend, you have a complete restructuring and transformation of governance. That government will be clean. Okay. Yes. Now, corruption and cartels are things that this country has struggled with yes. since independence. It's not something that's starting now. What is it that Miguna Miguna is going to do? I mean, every mm. politician that comes up, mm. comes up with a very clear plan, I will deal with them, I will make sure that this happens. How will, what's going to be different from what you're saying? You know, Mr. Getonga, uh, the problem I have is that you're assuming you make very many general statements that have no foundation. For example, you interviewed Evans Kidero here. He did not talk about corruption he or did. how he's going to fight cartels. No, did because you, did he's you watch part the of interview? the corruption. I did. Okay. I did. Mm -hmm. He cannot tell you how he's going to fight corruption because he's the dean of corruption. But you see, Miguna, no, no, Miguna. No, no. That, that... Let me answer your question. That's why I'm, I'm distinguishing myself from... from the ones that you are saying have said the same thing. And... They are not saying the same thing. I have the so-called manifesto of Mbuvi Sonko. It was an insert in your newspaper. There is nothing about corruption, and he can't fight it. There is nothing, there is no plan about eradicating corruption. And first of all, if you have a corrupt person presiding over county hall, you don't expect that person to fight can corruption. I, can I ask the question again so that we are on the same page? No, My no. question is to you, what is different? I don't want to know and what And I'm telling you what is different. I'm telling you this does not contain what I'm saying. Okay. Kidero Evans does not have even a plan, does not have a manifesto, and cannot understand what the fight against corruption is about because he's the dean. I'm telling you that the fact that you have had bad leaders, contaminated leaders, ethically contaminated leaders, corrupt leaders, looters and thieves of public resources for 55 years does not mean we are condemned to perpetual uh, record of that. I'm saying I'm fresh, I'm different, I'm not corrupt, I have integrity. Why must I, uh, why must I be grouped together with contaminated leaders? Mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm different. And I'm saying Nairobians have a right and need to know that I'm different. And by the way, they do know. And they are going to vote for somebody who is honest, who is, who is not doing this as a way of going in to make billions so that I can become part of the cartels. Mm -hmm. I could have become part of the cartels when I was working at the office of the prime minister because there were cartels around there and there are people who went and became officers in the former prime minister's office and became billionaires out of entrepreneuring. You know that in the current Jubilee government, for example, in the NYS scandal, there are uh, hairdressers that became billionaires. So Miguna is not a fool. If I wanted to become a billionaire out of entrepreneuring or out of grabbing public land or out of any other corrupt deals, mm. I could have. <clears throat> I made an ethical choice in my life not to do that. So for somebody to say, because all these people are corrupt, therefore Miguna, how can you say you are not corrupt? Yet my record is crystal clear. I have not asked and said that you are not corrupt. All I was asking is your distinct difference because we're in a sea of politicians and you and I know how politicians work. You and I know the history that we have and that's why I've started from the time of independence. Corruption has been a problem. So I want to know Mr. that Mr. Which... that is a general statement. Tell me... Why? Can you allow me to finish? You want, you, 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 no you, you want me to yeah. allow you to finish your question, but you don't want me to uh, finish no, no, my no, question. No, no, finish your question. Yes, and, my, and I have yeah. indicated that that's why I asked right from the time of independence, mm -hmm. corruption has been a problem. We have had these promises before, and I want to know from Miguna Miguna <laughs> what the difference is. Yes, you've mentioned <laughs> that Sonko doesn't Getonga. have a plan, or whoever else does, Get, doesn't Getonga. have a plan, but uh, what is the plan for Miguna Miguna? No, that's Getonga, all I want Getonga to know. I've told you the plan. If okay. you have not had it, there is something wrong with you. <laughs> so secondly, tell me what the other plans you are saying have been given. Okay. You can't tell me that for 55 years these people have come up with plans like mine and you can't point out any one of them. And I'm telling you, because I have to tell you, Kidero doesn't have the plan. Okay. Sonko doesn't have the plan. PK doesn't have the plan. Why shouldn't I say that? 
I do have the plan, and it is right here. Produce their plan. Okay. Compared to mine. I, 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 I'm and here then, to talk. I'm... No, <clears throat> and then tell me how their plan is not different from mine. Okay. Because I'm... I'm telling you my plan is different from mine. I've listed to you what I will do that they can't do because okay. they are contaminated. All but right. you don't want to hear that. No, I've had You want it. to repeat the myth I've had that it. for 55 years there have been plans. There haven't been any plans that I'm proposing. And right now, I'm running against this uh, basket of deplorables, and they have no plan. This is what I have to say. Okay. Yes. Let's go to the nitty-gritties. Yes. Nairobi has had a problem of water from time immemorial. It has not improved. How will you improve the water situation in that Nairobi? That is actually false. At Independence, Nairobi was water, water secure. That's completely false. In the 70s, Nairobi was completely water sufficient. Even when I joined the University of Nairobi in 1986, Nairobi was completely water sufficient. So do we have a water problem right now? Right now, but not from time immemorial. You see, your question is grounded on a falsehood. All right, so, let, me, so, let, me, so, let me let me let me no, correct let that. Me Mikuna, you, you'll ask the question and answer the question. I guess No, you... no, no. You are used to mediocre leaders that you can bamboozle and you can't do I that. I think to you're me. the one who's used to bamboozling no, 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 no. and bulldozing, no, but it's okay. I'm answering your questions. I'm at your studio and I'm not going to be shafted. So let me answer you. Okay. Let, no, me... let me answer you. Let me answer you. Your premise is wrong. Nairobi has not had a water problem since time immemorial. This is a recent phenomenon. And it is a recent phenomenon brought about by poor leadership. Recent is relative, but, but carry on. Listen to me, my friend. I'm answering your question. It is a recent phenomenon brought by poor leadership. You don't want to admit that. Because Nairobi has enough rain, UNESCO has said Kenya, Nairobi included, has enough rainfall that can provide sufficient supply of water for everything, including agriculture and irrigation, for 213 million people. So we are more than, there is more than enough water. Secondly, they say there is a high water table in Nairobi, which means there is water underneath, which all you need to do is just dig enough boreholes and be able to treat this water and supply it to residents. It's not happening because the perennial perpetuators of corruption like Hidero Evans and Sonko and PK have looted all this money and become billionaires instead of using this to supply water to residents. I say so because for the last five years, you've had a, a governor. He has not done anything about water. So we have cholera in Nairobi. You've had a senator whose role is to make sure that the county government delivers water, and he has done squat. Then Peter Kenneth has been in government and has been an MP before. So he can't say, he can't extricate himself that he has not held public office at the elective level. So what I'm saying is this. If you have a leader with a plan, with a vision, with a manifesto and programs like I do, and then that leader has integrity and is not going to steal public resources, water will be supplied. So where will the water come from? You mentioned we have a water table. That still doesn't answer where the water will come from. Does that mean drilling boreholes? Uh, you've also mentioned that uh, we have perennial rain and it floods. You've not told us whether I it's going to be harvested. I did not say that we have perennial rains and it floods. I think you are answering your own question. All right. Yeah. I what, say what, what, we have enough rain, according to UNESCO, that can supply semantics. more... Semantics. Than... No, please, please. Allow me... Gi... Extend me courtesy. Can you also extend the same courtesy? No, no, no. I'm answering you're asking your for... question, please. True, but can you also extend the same courtesy? Mr. Getonga, I'm going to answer your question. I'm also there asking, is... can you extend the same courtesy? You can argue all you want. There is enough rainfall that can supply 213 million residents. It's not happening right now because of corruption. In Gaberon, the capital city of Botswana, water that supplies Gaberon residents come from somewhere called French City, which is 400 kilometers away from Gaberon. All right? So you don't even have to need water within the vicinity, the geographic boundaries of the city. In Tel Aviv, there is no water like here. It is a desert, but it supplies all its residents with enough water. Water is not a question of rain. It's not a question of water table. It's a question of a visionary leadership that is going to use public resources 
to supply its citizens with what they need. So even if we have to get water from Lake Victoria up to here, we can because we have enough resources. But I'm telling you that we are lucky that we have enough rainfall and we have a high water table. And that can be done, and it will be done under Amiguna uh, governorship. It will be done. So the how-to is, how does that help us? How does that give us water? If right now we are on a water table that is high, yeah. like you've said, yeah. how does that give us water? What is it that you're going to do under your government to ensure that that water table is not just under us, but comes to a point where it can serve our so, water So which needs? means you did not even uh, understand my, my answer. So I will repeat it. I said that you, you can bore holes and extract the water, clean it and supply it to the people. Treat it <coughs> and supply it to the people. That's number one. You can do that. Mm -hmm. You hadn't said that, but carry on. No, I did. I okay. did. You go and watch the clip. <laughs> you will find that answer. Carry on, carry By on. the way, my memory is crystal clear. I remember exactly what I have said. Carry on. So don't try to, to bring in a mischief. Number two, I will harvest the, the rainwater. We have more than enough for 213 million people. That will be harvested, it will be kept in reservoirs, it will be treated, and we, it will be supplied to residents. In fact, you can even supply it to neighboring counties for agriculture, irrigation, and whatnot. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. What we lack are leaders of integrity that can do this because they are using all the money, public money, that should be used for doing this, they're stealing it. And I'm saying I will not steal it. But, but you're arguing instead of listening to my answers. OK. Let's talk about traffic. Another problem we have in Nairobi. What's your solution to traffic in Nairobi? I have, <laughs> I have the most excellent uh, solution. Mm -hmm. And I have specified it and articulated it in, in my manifesto. There are five solutions to traffic all over the world. It's not just here. And I will tell you what I have for here. Okay. Number one, our roads need to be broader, straighter, controlled by lights. That will make the flow of traffic much, much more efficient. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with the budget we have. Number two, there is no city of the size of Nairobi, more than four million residents, that does not have a light trail. Dar es Salaam just had one, Addis Ababa just had one, mm -hmm. South Africa has more, and we must do it for Nairobi. So I will build a light trail. That will be on dedicated electric grids, and that does not have traffic lights or whatever. That will move traffic all over the city. Number four, I will build a subway system. In Madrid, the latest subway system that was built, it cost 235 million USD, US dollars. That's much less than the 100 billion that was just looted from our coffers in the last one year, according to the Auditor General's uh, reports. So that was done in Madrid. It will be done here. So a subway system will be done here. When you have that, you solve the problems. OK. And yes. how would you intend to fund this? That's what I said. I from said the, the money that looted. was stolen mm -hmm. is more than enough to mm -hmm. do that, mm -hmm. to start with. Mm -hmm. Then number two, there is no country in the world that funds anything other than through taxes. Our tax rates are 30%, which is similar to Canada, similar to Sweden, similar to Norway, similar to many countries. Mm -hmm. This is all you need. We have enough tax bracket. We are generating enough in terms of land rates, in terms of licensing, in terms of uh, income tax, and money that the, the, the national government gives, mm -hmm. either in equalization or as direct injection into our uh, whatever, okay. uh, into our you know, treasury. So the as current county. tax that we're collecting is enough to fund it's more that. Than we, enough. Don't, we don't need any more. It's more than enough. OK, Yes. fair enough. Uh, the other issue, of course, that we have in Nairobi is housing and um, informal settlement. But let's start with housing. Mm. There is a sprawling of um, buildings that, first of all, are not, um, uh, are not qualified to be uh, where they are. Mm. Sometimes they're not built properly. We've even had some coming down. Is that something you view as a matter of concern as 
as Miguna Miguna. And secondly, what is it that you do to ensure that that stops? First of all, uh, uh, Nairobi is a mess. Um, uh, there is no real planning. So we must start at the planning stage. You realize that Nairobi, other than a few uh, exclusive estates, do not even have numbering for buildings, mm. even within the CBD. And so we start with the planning. There is already, it was given as a gift, uh, JICA, the Japanese International uh, Development Corporation, already gave Nairobi as a gift in 2013 a master plan, uh -huh. a proper master plan that you can implement, that I will implement, uh -huh. because Kidera sat on it for the last five years and he has not done anything. So, and it was given for free. They did this without any involvement by the county government. Number two, I intend to replace the slums with humane, affordable, modern housing for everyone who is poor or of modest means. And this Ethiopia is doing right now. You need uh, medium to high density uh, apartment blocks or condominiums that you construct all over the city with piped water, with sanitation, with enough uh, green spaces for children to play and for the environment to be, and then you clean up the environment. Uh -huh. you, and that is why I have introduced that housing plan together with a modern integrated solid waste management system so that it's not just housing, but it's the transformation of the environment so that the people who are poor, <clears throat> the people who don't have jobs, the people who are economically challenged can also live like real, full human beings. Right now, I'm telling you, I've been to Madare Valley, or Madare. Yesterday, I was in Kayole. I've been to Kebra. I've been to Dandora. I've been to Umoja. I've been to many, many, many estates doing door-to-door. -door. And the conditions under which our people live are below the levels of wild animals. Mm -hmm. This is totally unacceptable. Raw sewer is running everywhere, garbage is everywhere, and people live like animals. And these leaders do not care. As we campaign, they are dancing on the streets. Miguna is going door to door, but they are dancing on the streets. So they do not even, they are not even in touch mm -hmm. with the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. The Mamambogas need modern markets and the hawkers. Very well ventilated, visible to people who are going to, to shop there. So mm -hmm. what we have for a housing plan is completely modern and integrated. Mm -hmm. And this is what Nairobi needs. Okay, what do you think has been the reason why we still have slums? Because for you to transform it, mm. there has to be a history where we are coming from and the reason why they have been there for so long. Mm. I'm sure nobody would want to live in an indecent manner. What is it that has caused Nairobi to even be the home to the biggest slum in Africa I've for a long time? I've told you poor leadership. Poor leadership that does not care about the people. They don't. Kenyans have died. Just last week we buried uh, the total man, Mr. Nicholas Bewatt. Mm. Nobody knows even how much he's worth. Some people say he's worth more than 100 billion. You know you cannot spend 100 billion. Even your children cannot spend 100 billion. These people do not know why they were stealing. You steal so much that it is obscene. The same thing Kideru is doing. The same thing Bovi is doing. The same thing all these cartels are doing. And what I'm saying is this. We must reorient our politics to a politics based on vision, based on integrity, based on leaders that care about their people. Mm -hmm. If you go to Botswana, you will not find the kind of slums we have. If you go to any other country where leaders care about their people, you will not see the kind of slums we have. So that is the problem. The solution is in the quality of leaders you have. I have said integrity is the software of leadership. That's okay. where it starts. So in this case, Miguna is a single bullet, silver bullet that we need to sort out Nairobi. I did not Because of, of, of uh, well, if it starts and stops with leadership, you being the CEO as it were of Nairobi yes. then would mean... But, but you have a team. Mm. And I have a team. I have a team of young people, youth, who have never grabbed anything. In fact, I go to my meetings and I ask them, can you raise your hands, anybody who has grabbed the land? They don't know how do you do that. They don't even know how to grab a land, mm. a piece of land. As an they don't know how to steal. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that if you have these young people 
well educated, by the way. Almost all of them university educated, but they are unemployed. Mm -hmm. And when you meet them, you would not know that they went to school. But poverty is not stupidity. All you need is give them positions of responsibility, and they will deliver. As an independent candidate, yes. how do you intend to navigate the fact that you will not have marshaled numbers per se? What marshaled numbers? The, the numbers that you need to, to do this the work that you do. You cannot no. do it on your own. You need a team. No, but you see, <laughs> I talked of my team, and you ignored it. This is a but I've brought it up now. No, no, no. But I'm saying, be because I already said it, that I have a team of dedicated young people who are not corrupt. But let me educate you on our constitution. Please educate me. We have a presidential system where a governor is just like a president who appoints cabinet outside the county assembly. I don't need the county assembly to govern. You need a cabinet outside the county assembly. You need a civil service outside the county assembly. The county assembly is just a check on the executive. It does not help the executive govern. President Uru Kenyatta can govern this country without necessarily parliament, because parliament is not helping me govern. Parliament passes laws, but he governs with his cabinet, he governs with his uh, civil service. That's how you govern. That's how I'm going to govern. Number two, you don't need majority MCAs to govern. You don't. Kivotha Kibwana did not have it, and there are so many other governors all over the country that did not have them. The MCAs cannot undermine me. I'll tell you two reasons why. Mm -hmm. Number one, if the people, and the people will popularly elect me, and I do the business of the people, I create jobs for youth, I bring the infrastructure I've promised, and I bring in a government of integrity. If you oppose that even as an MCA, the people will deal with you. That's number one. The people will love what I'm doing, and they will deal with whoever wants to distract from what I'm doing. Number two, the MCAs will be so eager to have my budget passed because they also want money for their awards. They want money for their awards. They want money for their benchmarking trips, they want, which I will not encourage. But I'm saying mm -hmm. they will be very eager to pass the budget because if they don't, where will they get their salaries from? Okay, you make it sound yeah. very easy. Let's hope that it works because, out that because easy. Because I have it intact let, let, right here. Yes, and you'll need hey. to articulate that to the people so that I've it's that done easy. So. And uh, let's talk about garbage, because that's another huge issue that we have in this city. Mm -hmm. How would you deal with garbage? By the way, I've already addressed it, but I'll address it again. No, no, you just mentioned waste disposal so, management, I did which not is say a big that. term. Yeah, did you not did not say that. Oh. I said a modern, integrated, solid waste management system. Uh, explain to me now, what that is. No, but, but I'm going to just relax. I'm very relaxed. It is a modern, integrated, solid waste management system. It's not garbage. It's integrated. So which means you reduce, you reuse, you recycle. Mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. And we will have plants that will be recycling the garbage and trans, uh, transforming it into energy and other things. Before I came, I saw on your program a very innovative thing in Cameroon that uh, the former uh, footballer, world-class footballer Miller, Roger Miller, is doing in Cameroon. I watched it before I came here. Roger Miller is collecting uh, plastic bag, uh, plastic uh, material, bottles and whatnot mm. in Yaounde and other cities. And he has built an industry of transforming this into building material. That's a very innovative thing. So you do that. I also, because you know me, I do my research. Eh? I do my research. Evidently. No, no, yes, Evidently. I do my research. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a few other examples of what even Kenyans are doing. But because we have leaders with no integrity, they can't tap into this. So I'll give you another example of what a Kenyan is doing. There is a, you, you, you could just explain there it. Is a, no, I'm time. going to explain it. Mm. There is a newspaper article on uh, Sunday, July 23rd, of how someone called Dixon Ochien is doing something called sanivation. It's a project in Naivasha, where he's turning garbage into manure and other things mm. and into energy. Recycling. That is already happening. It's, not, it's more than recycling. Mm -hmm. So that's happening already in Naivasha. Mm -hmm. You can unveil that in Nairobi 
and make it bigger. Mm -hmm. Then there is another project that other innovative Kenyans have come up with. This is important. It's called Nairobi Rivers Regeneration uh, green, uh, Greening the City. This is being done by a group called the Planning House. It's an architectural group, but they do more than that. They just submitted this to me last week. Mm -hmm. And they have plans of transforming the Nairobi rivers, not just the Nairobi river, into a very clean river that will provide water for drinking. But be beside the river will be developments, recreational facilities, outdoor events, and things like that. They have it from here to the Indian Ocean. Okay. So what I'm saying is this that what I have is an integrated solid waste management system where you will not see solid waste. Plastic will be banned. It's already banned nationally. Mm. We need to ban it within Nairobi. Then this, when we don't have plastic, the ones we have, we will turn, like Mila is doing, into building materials because it, it's, it's already being done. So it's not a science that I'm recreating. And then we will do what Sweden and Norway is doing, turning this garbage into electricity so that people will have power. Okay. Now so, you... so, so I have a complete integrated solid waste management system. All right. You have uh, a, many good ideas and they're brilliant, I must say. Now, in the event mm. that uh, you did not become governor, would you be willing to work with whoever would be governor to implement some of these things? Because you seem to have the know-how and everything in place. The first thing they teach you in first year law school if you are a good student is never to answer a an hypothetical question. And because I'm a very good student, you will I, not don't, answer. I don't answer hypothetical questions. But I will tell you this, I'm in this to win. And the youth of Kenya, the youth of Nairobi, are with me. They are with me in their hundreds of thousands. They are with me in their millions. Remember, more than 500,000 of them were not voters in 2013, just right here in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. More than 500,000 of them. So nobody should tell you that this youth that don't care about tribe, that don't care about your class, that just want a good future for themselves, and the women of Nairobi will say no to this glorious project led by a man of integrity. Okay, so if you did not become governor, then does that mean then you would be willing to let all these ideas uh, you, you are basically still, not go? You are still going to the hypothetical, which I said I will not answer. You said if. Okay. Yes. All right. As we finish, maybe just talk to the people of Nairobi and tell them uh, you've given them a number of ideas why they should vote you, uh, vote for you rather. Yes. But uh, your closing comments. Patriots, comrades, the majestic people of Nairobi, I appeal to you to make this gigantic decision, a decision that will transform your life, a decision that will ensure that instead of the 55 years of grand larceny, grand corruption, and looting, you will have a man of integrity with a team of dedicated young Kenyans ready to transform your lives. So that instead of dependency, instead of handouts, you have a leader who will create real jobs for the youth, a leader who will make Nairobi a prosperous, world-class city not a city of garbage, not a city, not the headquarters of hawkers or matatus or the unemployed. Thank you. Vote for me on August 8th. Thank you very much. Miguna, Miguna. Thank you. That was a fantastic, gigantic, bombastic, <laughs> mind-blowing, show-stopping show right here with Miguna, Miguna. <laughs> but we have to call it a day because of time. And, well, the vote is with you come August the 8th. This is how we wind up Morning Express this morning. Wish you all a fantastic show. Do stay with us uh, right here on KTN News as Worldview is coming up next. Have a good day.